Welcome to Bora Mastery, everyone. It's Vaughn here, the founder of Bora Mastery, and it's awesome to have you here. Today, we're going to do the slow foxtrot. I've had a lot of requests about this dance. Why? Well, you know why. This dance lends itself to one of the I'd rather not dance today categories sometimes, but it's one of the most beautiful, right? Like, although it's difficult and anything worth mastering is typically going to be quite difficult, it is one of the most beautiful dances that you can do. I often equate to it because in my own professional career, when we were competing, 10 dance was what we specialized in. Why? Because we loved both ballroom and Latin dancing. And so we couldn't really decide which one are we going to be, you know, the one we focus on more. We did both. So it took up a, double the time essentially and double the lessons, but we loved it. And I always thought about this and went, slow foxtrot is like the rumba of ballroom dancing. You know, we spend so much time on rumba walks. If we get that right, we're going to understand our Latin dancing at a higher level and we're going to have more control and balance. And so many of the essential elements in that dance will make us better in a lot of the fundamentals of the other dances. In ballroom dancing, slow foxtrot is that one. It's like in, in studios all around the world, it's like, oh, the slow foxtrot. Oh, I need to do that next lesson. And then every lesson, it's like foxtrot, foxtrot, foxtrot. Here's a little interesting thing for me. My first lesson on Foxtrot, I was doing the feather step. My last lesson when I was finishing up as a competitive dancer was with Anthony Hurley. And guess what it was on? The slow Foxtrot, the feather, the reverse turn, the three step, all the basic movements that you would learn when you first begin. So what, is, what I find interesting about that is that when you begin, what you learn is still what you do when you're at the professional level. Now, yes, we have greater control, I suppose, when you're a higher level, you have different elements working for you and different skill sets already developed. However, we're still aiming to master the certain principles that I'm gonna to discuss today. So we'll use the fox shot, I'm gonna use the feather, and we're gonna do it at a, at a basic level, and I'll give you some super tips that'll help you layer on top, but I'm pre-framing it to say, do not be confused. Just because you've learned this once, twice, or you've been doing this for 10 years, doesn't really matter. It's something that you and I have to do the rest of our life. I remember Peter Eggleton at a Blackpool Congress lecture saying, you can learn any step in ballroom dancing in 15 minutes, and it will take you a lifetime to know how to dance it. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, you got me for life then. Oh, wow, what a, what a way to think about dancing. So as I said, don't be confused by the pretense of I've done that step before. I've heard my teacher say something similar because we can all get better. The room for mastery is like the biggest room in the world. Now, I came up with a saying yesterday. I was thinking, how do I explain to someone what mastery means? The thing I came up with is if you can measure it, you can master it. So if we can measure what we're doing with our feet, if we can measure what we're doing with our body, if we know where we are in time and space, and if we can feel that, we can fix it. And so if we can measure it, we can master it. So it's not an abstract concept. So there are certain principles that are gonna pay you rich dividends if you master them. So if we look at Foxtrot to start with, the feather step, now there's seven, like 0.2 feathers, right? We're gonna talk about the feather step, the very first one. And if we look at it, and I'll do it as man and lady, so stay with me as we go through this. But the feather step itself, we commence off with the right foot. We take it forward and I'll go through the footwork, uh, so the foot positions first. So we're going right foot forward on step one. We take the second step with the left foot forward left side leading, preparing to step outside partner on step two. Step three, we're sneaking outside the partner in what we call CVMP. And on step four, we're stepping forward with the left foot. Okay, so that's our feet positions. With the lady, she's going backwards. She starts off step one, left foot back. Step two, right, sorry, that's the preparation step. So step one, right foot back. Step two, oh, what am I doing? Terrible morning. Left foot back, I should say. Right foot back, right side leading, preparing to step outside partner. There's the one there. Left foot back in CBMP. So the man is now sneaking outside. And then right foot back, straight back. Now, as you can see, it's a bit early in the morning. I'm still getting my lady brain on. But the point is, that's our foot positions. What you're gonna notice in Foxtrot is a couple of things are happening. So let me help you understand the dance. Why this dance is more difficult in the interim, in the beginning, is because our movement from beginning to end doesn't stop, it doesn't cease, it continues from beginning to end. Because of it continuing, you have to think of yourself as a car shifting gears. 
you're going from low gears to high gears, as in low speed to high speed and then back down again. There is no stopping though, there's no stop signs that you go through. This is like you're cruising on a, on a highway and you have to slow down behind cars and then speed back up again. So you're accelerating and decelerating all the time. Now this is more advanced technique for down the track, which I'll do more training on us, I think in the future. It's something I'll cover in Border Mastery Academy for sure. But the idea is, is that you continually move your body and your, uh, your weight through time and space. Now because of that, you've got to understand a couple of basic elements that make that happen. One of those is CBM, and the other one is a foot position called CBMP. People confuse these all the time. My coach used to say, Vaughn, what's CBMP? And I'd be like, contra body movement position, Penny. She'd be like, what does it mean? I don't need a parrot, I need a dancer. And I'm like, I actually don't know how to explain it. Oh my God. So maybe you're in the same position. You have no idea what CBM means because you can say it, you know, contra body movement, but you don't know what it means. And maybe with CBMP, you confuse that with CBM because these abbreviations, they confused the hell out of me in the beginning. I didn't understand what was going on. And so let me illuminate a little bit for you because if we understand these positions, we're gonna know the fundamental principle of step, swing, sway, which is what Alex Moore taught our coach Penny. So step, swing, sway is a beautiful way of thinking about creating good foxtrot movement when you're first learning to dance, and of course what we're aiming to master, and then everything else you learn on top of that sort of piles into this uh, technique. So the idea of CBM, first of all, is contra body movement. So it generally initiates a turn. So if I'm stepping forward on my right foot for the man, or back with the left foot as the lady, my left side will turn towards that foot. That initiates a body turn, okay? So because of this action, I can now swing my left foot forward, no problems, and off I go. What happens is that as I create that turn, it gives an indication to the lady that step two, I can prepare easily to step outside my partner. Now, if we look at this for a moment, you essentially have four tracks when you dance. So four train tracks, two for the man, two for the lady, the man's left foot goes on the lady's outside, the right foot goes on the lady's inside, and her, leg, her right leg goes on your inside men, and her left foot can swing on the outside. So that's our four tracks of movement. We don't actually stand completely straight on with our toes. Now, because of that, step one, when I get that CBM coming through with my uh, left side of my body towards my right foot, that tells the lady a turn is coming or a turn has come and that I'm gonna be preparing through step two and my side lead to step outside of her. Now, what happens then is on step three, as I take my step forward, Notice that the tracks converge. I am now, I have now gone from two tracks of movement into one. This is, this foot position is called CBMP. Now when we do CBMP, and we go from two to one, either forward or backwards, in these two areas, we have to also realize that the body will be turning as well. Why? Because we've already generated CBM at the very beginning. So CBM doesn't carry through every single step, it initiates the movement, I suppose, through, through the turn. So if I go step one again, I'll get my frame up. Step one is my CBM. Step two, I've got my side lead and I've started my sway action. Step three, I can step outside my partner in those two tracks. Now, I've already created the body position from back there. If you notice, I don't all of a sudden, this is a big mistake people make in a feather, is that they'll go step one, Step two, and then they'll try to get outside their partner. They'll sneak around. I'll do it this way so you can see it again. Actually, maybe I'll do it back to the camera. So they'll go step one, no CBM really. Step two, and then step three, they try to sneak outside. Because you have to get outside and you didn't do the proper setup at step one, you cannot do the feather effectively and get outside comfortably. You have to do this sort of hip snaking thing. Very awkward, very uncomfortable. I used to do that for a long time. So if we recap, step one is where everything sort of sets up. We take our beginning position. Often couples will do a preparation step, a little wind up. The preparation step just creates a nice movement that then allows the CBM to be stronger when we go into the first step of the feather. Then step two, then step three, and I'm running out of room. And step four, I would then step onto my roof. <laughs> but the idea is, is that you'll see throughout the continuation of my movement, it's because of my foot position and my body action, I have created the opportunity to be able to comfortably step outside my partner. Now ladies, you have to do the same thing, except I'm gonna give you the biggest no-no of all. Are you ready? Giant no-no coming. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 don't do this. You do not initiate CBM. You don't initiate rise. You don't initiate anything. 
You follow the man's lead. So men, you better be good on this, right? Because she has to follow the direction your body weight is telling her to go and follow the amount of turn that you are giving. Because CBM is a sliding scale. It's like, how much of it do you do? How strong is it? Well, it actually depends on the figure you're doing because it's different for each step. But if you're going back, ladies, on step one, the man's done a little bit of a preparation, you take step one back, your body turns, you're now allowing him, especially through your hips, to sneak outside you. Step two is very important. Your right side must be leading. That way the man can come outside you. And on step three, you have your left foot in that one track position. Okay, then take step four, your body straightens up, of course, and off you go. Now, I said earlier something about step, swing, and sway. So let me come back, because this is how you can think of all of this technique making a bit more sense. In terms of the sway action in Foxtrot, we've got our body turn. We've got our feet going into a one track or CBMP position. What happens then with the body is we have a sway. Now the sway in Foxtrot, if you have a look, if I do my arms towards the camera, right? The sway in Foxtrot, if that was straight, the sway is what we call linear sway. Why? Because normally when you sway, your body sways laterally across the movement because we're going to the inside of a turn, like in the waltz. So our sway is felt through the ankles up and that's our sway action. In Foxtrot though, we're not closing our feet, okay? So we actually sway and we across the movement, right? And that's what creates the, the beautiful shape of the feather. So that happens, I always like to say to my students, that happens as a result of setting everything up correctly to begin with. You don't want to ever artificially create sway, meaning you're not trying to step forward and go step one, step two, step three, and then forward on four, right? Because if you think of sway to, in the wrong context, you're going to distort your body. Remember, everything happens because of good foot positions and good body actions, okay? So we want to practice our body uh, swinging. We want to practice our body creating natural sway as best as possible, which is an inclination of the body. But in Foxtrot, it's an inclination of the body and we're stepping on the line of the supporting foot. Now sway then can occur, right? And that helps to balance, of course. Then we straighten everything up as we step forward again. And so with all of that in mind, let's look at the step swing idea. So as soon as you take your first step with the right foot, remember, if not including the preparation step and the wind up here, generally due to space, but the actual technique of the foot. So if I go forward on the right foot, I've got my step first and then my swing. Swing, so if we do that again, Step, swing, sway, step. And off we go into the sunset, right? If we do it again, and here we go. And step, swing, sway, then forward again. Just have to be a bit more constrained so I don't hit the wall. But if we do it one more time, I'll go this way. And with the right foot, step, swing, sway, then straighten up at the end. And that was a nice general demonstration of it. Of course, you can develop a lot more of that through shoulder weight and creating a hell of a lot more turn or swinging actions, but that's more advanced. For today, your goal is to go back to your feet positions where your feet are going, understand the relationship of your body using CBM properly, and then how to step in CBMP. One note for you ladies, when you're doing step three of a feather, so step one is back, step two is that right side lead, step three is the actual feather, when you're stepping in one track, make sure your feet are in one track because if you actually step with your foot in any other position, you will pull both of you off. So the way I remember our coach telling us is that you want your hips to actually create a turn as if you're opening a door so that the man can pass you without a problem. The second thing that I noticed ladies get wrong is because they rise with the man's feather step. See, the man's feather in terms of footwork goes with the right foot goes heel, toe, toe, then toe, heel, then heel. Now, this is again why Fox Shot's difficult because ladies, you are not reciprocating that footwork at all. You rise through your legs and body, not through your feet. So you go back, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, then guess what, toe, heel, I'm just don't wanna run out of room. So all your footwork is going backwards is toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, okay? When the man is going forward, he will be rising up through his toes, through his legs and his body. You will feel that. You have, to, you have to make sure that you use floor pressure, but you rise up through the body in response to that. That's where you see the ladies creating beautiful shaping actions, but it isn't because they're rising through their feet. This is one of the reasons why Foxtrot's so tricky, because it's often one of the first times where 
you're doing something very different in terms of feet than the man. Like normally when you do rise going backwards, ladies, there's something called no foot rise for both man and lady going backwards. That means as you take a backward turn, your, your moving foot, like the left foot, for example, on a natural turn, will not rise, right? You won't actually come out of that heel until you put your weight into the actual uh, sidestep. So in Foxtrot, you actually continue keeping your feet on the floor. And so you want to pull the heel all the time. Pull the heel, pull the heel. Now, there's a video I did earlier that will help you understand how to do the walks and ballroom dancing more effectively, because if you can't walk, you're not going to dance well. And we're not talking about normal walking, we're talking about ballroom walking. It's just like Latin. If you can't do a good rumba walk, don't expect your rumba to be any good at all. So listen, I want to thank you for tuning in today. That was very heavy technique, it was very loaded, so it may pay you rich dividends to go back through this a few times, because I had to. When my coach would say, what is CBMP? What is CBM? When do we do it? I'd be like, okay, I understand the definitions. Contra body movement, contra body movement position. But I could never demonstrate what it really meant. And to me, there's knowing and then there's doing. And I don't care how intelligent you are, in dancing, your body must be able to do it and do it automatically. So listen, I want to thank you for tuning in. Visit borrowmastery.com and .tv. Make sure you subscribe to all of our channels. And I look forward to helping you master the art of ballroom dancing in the future with me.